Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kishore from Tested. Kishore, what do you have for us today? We're bringing back one of our favorites, Zeke Kossover. He's a science teacher that's now at the Exploratorium, which is one of the preeminent science museums in the world. And he's here today to demonstrate one of my favorite science experiments that ends with a little bit of a bang, but demonstrate some amazing scientific principles along the way. And the setup for this experiment is actually not too complicated. The payoffs can be really cool. So please enjoy this simple feat of science. We have another fun science experiment you can do at home. And this time it's a classic, one that we've probably all seen and remember from physics class. I'm lying down on a bed of nails. And this is surprisingly comfortable for what it is. Now I wouldn't trade in my mattress for something like this, but it's an amazing feat of physics to see what you're doing here. And we have Zeke Kossover, a teacher at the Exploratorium who built this bed of nails um, to talk about it. First of all, the Exploratorium is a museum of science, art, and human perception. And you built this bed of nails, which is a weird kind of bed to have at home. Um, let's talk a little bit about the physics of it before we get into the build. Why is it that I can just lie on a bed of nails like that and not feel much of anything except a little bit of pressure? It's because you're not lying on a bed of one nail and working our way up. Um, so the thing that uh, causes your skin to be punctured is called differential pressure. It's that there's a lot of pressure in one spot and less pressure somewhere else. Um, so normally when you stand on your feet, the, your, your entire body's weight is spread out over the entire area of your foot. If you were to step down on a nail, it would be your entire it's weight on, that on one. the area of the head of the nail. And because that's very small, then the pressure would be very high. The f pressure is force divided by area. So your force is your weight and the area is small. So that would make the pressure very large. If we can make the area bigger by standing on lots of nails, then the pressure will correspondingly be smaller. So you want to be on as many nails as possible. Is there actually a, a mathematical way of determining what that right sort of differential pressure you need to be? How many nails per square inch you need? Yeah, so it depends on the size of the nail head, but for these it's about 60 to 70 nails. And the way I figured that out is I took a banana and banana skin is sort of close to human skin. And I put one nail on top of it and I started putting weights on it until the nail punctured the banana. And then I figured out how big that nail head was and it turns out to be about uh, 60 nails is about the amount that you need to lie on. There are 800 nails here, so we're... Wow, that's We have a lot more than we need. So let's talk about how you put this together. So we're gonna um, get down in front of, of this particular piece, which you've right. built in a way that you can sort of see the, uh, the back of. Right, so we have a, a layer of uh, pegboard, and then, here, oh, sorry. There's this layer of pegboard, and then there's another layer of pegboard, and I've just, threaded these very long nails through them. You can buy shorter nails, no problem at all, um, but longer nails look more impressive. I mean, you could, I imagine you could do this with just drilling through wood. Yeah, but it takes, a, you have to be, you, you can drill your way through it, but it does require a lot of patience. Pegboard then, yeah. pegboard it is. So what are the limits in terms of, you probably did the math on this, how much force can this probably take? This can take about 10 times my body weight before it punctures me Whoa. when I'm lying down on it, which is, is great comfort. I mean, if you were to fall on it, that would still be bad because you wouldn't hit all the nails at Evenly. once. Yeah. If you somehow dropped perfectly flat across it, it would hurt, yeah, I'm guessing. You know, parts of you that stick out and only get like one nail, like your nose or the rounded part on the back of your head, that could be uncomfortable. Um, but if you could like, you know, just land flat on your chest, you'd probably be fine. Wow. So how are we going to push the limits of what this can take? Well, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lie down on the bed of nails and then you're going to put another older school version of bed of nails on top of me, one we made using a nail gun. And then you're going to put a cinder block on top of that. And then Norm is going to smash the cinder block with a sledgehammer. So why don't we get set up? So as you're talking through, why, what does the second bed of nails do? And you can go ahead and lie down. So the second bed of nails has two functions. The first is to protect me in case Norm misses. <laughs> I don't really want to be hit by a sledgehammer. And then the second function of it is, is that it has weight. 
-hmm. and the weight makes the sledgehammer uh, move more slowly. I'll give you that face shield in a second. Okay. I'm just gonna model what this looks like. So this bed of nails, how do you usually put it on I you? I put this one right on my chest. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're just gonna model it right now and then set up for the shot in a moment. And then um, I'm assuming this is, doesn't have nails to protect your money maker? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, so I can put it down mm -hmm. this way and it's, it's all good. Yep. And it's really about protection for you. Yep. And it looks dramatic, but really it's just as safe as if you were lying on the bed itself. Yep. Awesome. We're gonna get set up for the big sledgehammering. We'll be right back. I still can't get over that visual of somebody driving a sledgehammer into a concrete block on your chest. Did you feel it at all? I mean, I did have to be replaced with an exact replica <laughs> afterwards. No, no, it really doesn't, it doesn't hurt any uh, more actually at all. And in terms of the, the math of it and the physics of it, how much force like, does a sledgehammer deliver in that kind of context? It, yeah, it depends on how much it weighs. That was an eight pound sledge. It depends on how fast Norman sends it downwards, but the main thing that protects me is the fact that the block breaks into pieces and that steals energy away, as well as the fact that the block itself is heavy and the other bed of nails that was put on top of me is also heavy and they both eat up a lot of the energy as well. So that very little gets to me. Like it's, it's scary, don't get me wrong. I wear a face shield for a reason, but it's really not, it's really not very dangerous. Thanks so much, Zeke. Where can people find out more information on experiments like this? Uh, they can go to www.exploratorium.edu or they can come visit us at Pier 15 on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. You should definitely check out that site. There's loads of different science activities that are great for doing at home or doing with your kids in school or even for adults. That was pretty fun. Thanks again, Zeke. Thank you very much. You're a natural with that sledgehammer. I had a little bit of practice, <laughs> and I've also seen uh, Jamie and Adam, Adam do this on stage multiple times. It really is a classic. It is an absolute classic. I wish my physics teacher in high school did it, but I've seen it numerous times. I'm still astounded by it. Like when you swing that sledgehammer, you're still a little nervous about it, weren't were you? Absolutely, especially the way we did it with Zeke not only lying on a bed of nails, but also having an additional bed of nails on top. He was sandwiched between nails and it just shows that your brain doesn't reconcile basic concepts because what you think of nails, you think it's sharp, you think it's gonna pierce it, but actually with the distribution of force, it doesn't do a lot. It was amazing and even with that sledgehammer, we didn't even come close to the limits of how much force that setup could take without puncturing his skin. Well, that was a great demonstration, but we'd love to hear from you what other experiments you'd like to see us test on this channel. Or it's, other things that Norm wants, that you're gonna have him swing. I'm, I'm addicted to <laughs> smashing things now with sledgehammers. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, and we'll see you next time on Simple Feats of Science. Bye.